Go ahead, Paul. Okay, sounds like I'm available again here. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Paul Zeno, one of the music scheduling consultants here at Music Master. And as, as has been promised, we're going to spend the next hour or so diving into printed log designs in Music Master, as well as some printed reports and a few other places where you can print things out of the software. So for starters, let's dive right on in here to printed log designs. A couple of ways you can get into the printed log designer within the software. Uh, first one, on the data set menu, go to schedule and then print logs. Pretty self-explanatory. Second option is from within the schedule editor, if we were to open up today's log, the white paper printer icon is how you can go into your printed log designer. The red one does a quick print of your layout right here on your screen. So if we were to use that red quick print icon right now, we're going to get a printout of exactly what we're seeing on the schedule editor screen at this point. We'll just click OK here and let you see that real quick. And as I said, it shows pretty much exactly as you would see it. There's no page breaks here at the top of an hour, so if the hour starts in the middle of a page, so be it. Uh, you can modify this layout using the show hide fields icon or modify editor layout icon right here. And Drew touched on this briefly during his presentation. You can add and subtract fields from your view and then use that for a quick print layout. But we are going to spend more time on the custom print and log design. And there's one other way you can get into that, and that would be by clicking your schedule icon selecting your print playlists, and then the date you wish to print. All three methods of getting into the printed log designer take you to this same little scheduled print box. As you see, I already have two designs in here. We're going to use Music Master Log Design 1. Set your first and last hours that you wish to print. So if we wanted to print all the logs for a full week, we could do so. March 4th through the 10th would give us a full week of logs. We can also tell it to start in the middle of a day if we wanted. So we could start at the 6 a.m. hour and run through the 11 p.m. hour. Something a little more common would be I never print more than just my midday guy's shift, or I only print overnights. Well, if you never print other shifts, that's where this included hours box comes in real handy. Right now, all the hours of the day are selected. So when we print every hour between midnight through 11 p.m. at this point, is going to print out. We can customize that by clicking the All button here, and we can turn off certain hours. So if you never print overnights, just simply deselect the overnight hours. Or if you only print overnights, which is what we're going to do today, we can say we're printing none of them, and then select just those overnight hours. We're just going to print those five hours during our presentation today for speed and uh, time purpose. Click OK, and it now tells us when we go to print, regardless of what is set here, we're only including five out of the 24 hours of a day. So if this printout here were to start at 5 a.m., for example, we'd actually get nothing to print because the five hours selected were midnight through 4 a.m. So we'll go back to leaving this at 12 a.m. When you get your database back from your music scheduling consultant, assuming you are a new customer, you've just gotten your database converted from some other software system, Generally speaking, it will come with a printed log design, usually a very basic one. It has just a couple of the basics within it, unless you and your consultant have already discussed the specifics that you need, in which case they would have customized it for you. But nine times out of ten, you're going to get a very basic design, as we have laid out here in Log Design 1. I'm just going to click Edit here to open up that printed log design. And we're going to show you what is all entailed here. Now, we've got three sections here. On the left, we've got our Fields Toolbox. We can turn that on and off using the Fields Toolbox icon here at the top. It's pretty important to have that one open in order to build your locks, so we're going to leave that as is. On the far right, we have our Properties Toolbox. Again, we can turn that on and off using this icon, Properties Toolbox. Again, it's fairly important to have when it comes to building your printed log design, so we're going to leave that turned on. In the center section, all this stuff is where we do all of our editing. We have a bunch of different headers for different elements that you could print. For example, page headers, hour headers, your music items. Music items here consists of any category that's a music category. In this database, we'd have our A, B, R, X, and so on. 
as opposed to non-music, which are those that have the hash mark through them. Top of our IDs, liners, the Metallica kickoff, and the top 100 liners are all non-music categories. And we can change so that music categories would print differently than non-music categories. I'm just resizing that real quick. We also have fill songs. If you're using a fill song position in your clocks, this is where you would set up the layout for the fill songs if you wanted them to print differently. Log notes and stop sets print fairly much the same way. The difference being that a stop set indicator is one is a log note that has the sweet mark checked on it. So if a sweet marker is going to print differently than a log note, this is where you would set up those sweet markers and how they print versus how your other log notes print. We also have traffic positions if you're using traffic merge elements in your in your logs or in your clocks. If you're actually importing traffic into Music Master, you can have your spots print out. You can have a printout for your unscheduled positions if you forgot to edit something or you want to leave something blank and let the jock schedule that. You would set that print design and unscheduled. Then you have hour footers and page footers. So since the bulk of the design is really based on how you want your music to print, we're going to focus in on that. For starters, let's see what this log is going to look like using this design. To do so, just click the print icon up at the top. You can select whatever printer you have available to you. We're just going to leave it on my HP LaserJet and click OK. By default, the program will give you a print preview anytime you go to print within the software, unless you've turned it off. In this database, it's turned on, so we're going to see this print preview screen, the report viewer, come up an awful lot. Looking at this, pretty basic layout. We've got our airtime, scheduled airtime, title and artist, Slither by Velvet Revolver, and our scheduled runtime. The problem with this is that nothing really stands out from anything else. It all just kind of glops itself together, with the exception of having our artists in capital letters. And that's simply because that's how I've entered them in this database. So let's make this so that it's usable, legible, and makes a lot of sense for your analysis. We're just going to close out of that. Like I said, we're going to dive into the music positions here. I'm clicking on the gripper bar to the left of the non-music elements just to pull it down so I have a little bit of workspace in here. You can size this as big or as small as you want it. Now we've got about an inch and a half of workspace. Generally speaking, about an inch is what you're going to need for doing the work in one of these six, uh, sections. So under music, instead of having the title slash artist field, which is the description field, I'm going to actually put in an artist field and a title field. That way they're in nice, neat, clean columns. So to get rid of the description field, it's as easy as clicking on it. You'll notice it's highlighted with the dot boxes around it. You can either click the X to delete it, right click in the box and delete it, or just simply click in it and hit the delete button on your keyboard and it's gone. So let's go ahead and build this design. Click on music, all of our fields are updated now on the left. We're going to take the artist field, drag it across, here's one of those drag and drop features Juru was talking about during his session an hour ago, and drop it in there. Now when you drop an element in, it typically will size itself to be about an inch. You can make that bigger or smaller by clicking and dragging on the perimeters of the box. We just doubled it in size, basically. I don't need it to be that wide. I'm going to leave it just like so. The next element I want is title. So we'll come down here in our list of available fields, find title, drag it and drop it in. You'll notice as we size it up here in the ruler bar, it also shows you how big that field is going to be. I know I need this to be just about a little over two inches here. We'll go up to five and a half right there like so. So now when we go to print, what's it going to look like? Well, we'll see it real quick. There we go. Already an improvement because things are in nice, neat columns. All of our artists are stacked up in a nice, neat column here. Oh, we noticed Steve Ray Vaughn and... We ran out of room for double trouble. We're going to have to fix that. For Fall Out Boy, we noticed Sugar, we're going down. The Guitars Down version, or Guitars Down mix, missing that last word. So we need to make sure that these fields can accommodate what it is that we're printing. To do that, we actually need to tell it that the artist field can grow, and the title field can grow beyond the perimeters of the box we've delegated to it. So we'll click on Artist. And this is where that Properties toolbox comes in real handy over here on the side. Down here under behavior, can grow, instead of false, which right now says if you've got Stevie Ray Vaughan in double trouble and it doesn't all fit, 
you just lop it off. Instead, we're going to change that to true. That's just a simple pull-down box. So our behaviors for the artist field says it can grow. It can shrink, too. If there's nothing to print there, it can print nothing. Multi-line means it can print on two lines if necessary, and it can wrap the words. So it can say Steve Ray Vaughan and double trouble on a second line. We're going to set our title field to do the same thing. So now when we go to print this out, you'll quickly notice Stevie, Ron and Va Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble does print out in its entirety onto that second line. Sugar, we're going down, guitars down version, shows up on its second line as well. Big improvements already. What else can we do within here? Well, for starters, I want to make it bigger so that it stands out a little bit better when we go to print this out. So I'm going to change the font size. Right now we're using a 10-point font by default. We're going to change that to a 12-point font for all the items in this line. And that's done up here. Simply switch it to a 12. And you'll notice already it's bigger. Make that bigger as well. Let's change the title. And I'm going to change my runtime too. Additionally, I want these items to be bold. So I'm just going to select each one and make them bold. You can also set those settings over within the properties. We could change our font here. We could change it to bold and so on over on that side. Just a little bit quicker to do it right there. One more thing, I want my titles italicized. So now when we go to print out, look at how that pops. Only thing that we've done is we've lopped off the little AM, PM indicator at the end of our air time. We can either size that field a little bit bigger, or we can leave it as is. Choice is ours. I say, what the heck, we're editing this thing to make it the way we want it. Let's make it a hair bigger. Let's we'll click on airtime, drag it across, and make it just a touch bigger. So now it'll all fit. Another thing we want to do for our announcers is they always complain, I need to know the intro time. I want to know if it ends cold, or if it ends in a fade, or a dissolve, or with a pause, or whatever. Well, I'm kind of running short on space here. You'll notice we're printing a six and a half page, six and a half inches page. You can, on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper, very easily get seven and a half inches of printable space. So let's change that. We're going to change the page setup, which is the icon for such is right here. Page setup just to the side of print. We're going to change our margins instead of one inches on the left, right, and top and bottom. We're going to change them to half inches. And click OK. And all of a sudden we have seven and a half inches of printable space. Yeah. <laughs> Let's throw in our intro and ending codes. So we'll come up here, find intro. Now because it's going to size as an inch, and I know an inch isn't going to fit in here, I'm just going to size it in advance. My intros are two characters in length, so I need about that much space. And I'm going to make it bold, make it a 12-point font like the rest of that line. Take it, drop it right in there. My ending codes are single characters, C for cold, F for fade, D for dissolve. Size that down, make it bold and a 12-point font as well. Drag and drop that in here. Additionally, I want to have a little hash mark in between the intro and the runtime, and another one between runtime and ending. The way to best do that is to draw it in. We just need a little line, so we're going to draw a little line. Thanks to this handy icon right up here at the top that says line. Click on it, now our icon turns into a line drawer. If you wanted to just draw a line, you could just do so right there on your screen and you've got your line. That's not what we want, so we'll delete that line. And again, that was just clicking the delete button on the keyboard. Click line and we're going to draw a hash between one time and intro. And we'll draw another one between ending and runtime. Want to see how that looks? Okay. Hit print. That's the nice thing about building these in Music Master is that you can see what they're going to look like as you go through the building process. You don't have to just be surprised and then start a whole new design. You can continue building it as you go. Notice that Steve Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble is definitely taking up two lines. Same thing with Sugar, we're going down. Two other things my jocks have asked me to put into the printed log design. 
right off the top of the bat is the year of release and the category the song came from. All right, so we're going to take the category field. I'll size that down about like so. Make it bold. I'm going to leave it in a 10-point font. I'm going to slide that all the way here to the side. In my year field, right here, I'll make that bold. Again, it's only four characters, so I'll size that and drop it in here. I want to make sure that there's space between the ending code and the year, so I'm just going to simply write justify my year field. By doing that, it just slightly shifts it over so that it's going to be justified on the right-hand side. I'll do the same thing for category. And I want my run times to be centered in that field, so we'll center it like so. Now when we go to print out, Mighty Fine Printed Log. But wait, there's more. <laughs> of course. We'll close out of that. For our non-music fields, if we want to, we can change that to artist and title. Or we can leave it as just the description field, which is title slash artist in this database. Just to make it all nice and pretty, I'll throw in the artist and title fields for us. And you'll see they line up nice and easily. We could even go so far if we wanted to, we could use the control button and then click the title field up above. And now we can slide one of them and they both move the same. So that we know we have them lined up. Move that over just like so. They're lined up. You can also with those same features control click on the second one. You can make sure that the same height, the same width, the same size, and so on. Kind of an advanced feature in the printed log designer. I want to throw in some more information for my announcers in my music fields. For example, I want my album field to print. What can we do there? Well, add in the album field. Just drop it right underneath artist. Size it out. Make sure it can grow if necessary if I have any real long album titles. Additionally, I want my albums to be underlined. So we'll click the underline icon right there. Now when we go to print out, again you'll notice nice neat columns and our albums will be underlined and start slightly indented underneath the artist. And there we go, Contraband by Velvet Revolver. Sound of Madness by Shinedown, Machine Head by Deep Purple. All the columns are lined up neatly. So far, so good. A lot of people have asked in the past, how do I get my song notes or my song trivia or my artist trivia information to get printed? That's what we're going to dive into next. Song trivia, as Drew showed in his presentation, can be set up within library maintenance and applied to any given song in the database. The way to get that information to print on your lock is to come down here to the very bottom of our fields list, and it's the last item available. We're going to click on that and drag it up here into our printed design and size it out accordingly. Allow it to grow, because I know for a fact I've got some pretty long trivia information in here. And I want it italicized so it stands out a little bit. My artist trivia is done similarly, except instead of doing artist trivia on a song, like you do for song trivia, you do artist trivia on your artist keywords. Any keyword field in the database can have trivia attributed to it. So we're going to add in the artist keyword field here. And again, I'm going to size it accordingly. Allow it to grow. And so that I can differentiate my song trivia from my artist keyword trivia, I'm going to make this a different uh, typeface. Instead of Arial, we're going to go down here to Courier New. So now when we go to print this out, we're going to see all this extra information printed underneath our artists and titles.
and there it is. Except we missed one step. And yes, I did that on purpose. If you don't set up the trivia element of it, you're just going to print out your artist keywords. So right now our artist keyword for Nickelback is Nickelback. We don't want that. We actually want the trivia that goes with it. But you can see here our song trivia for Deep Purple, Smoke on the Water was number 11 on VH1's greatest hard rock songs of all time. Let's cancel out of that and let's fix this up real quick. Artist keywords, we've got to tell it which keyword we want to include the trivia from. If you have multiple keywords on a song, let's say you're playing a song by the Beatles, and you have Beatles as your primary keyword, followed by John Lennon, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, and Paul McCartney, you need to indicate which of those keywords you want the trivia to print from. We're just going to simply print for keyword one. So only the first keyword is going to have trivia printed. And I need to tell it that the trivia item I want is the fixed trivia, rotating trivia, or active. I'm going to select active. That way, whatever trivia is allotted to that song will get printed, whether it's rotating or it is fixed. I'll get the active trivia to print here. Now when we go to print this out, instead of just seeing artist keywords, we're actually going to see the trivia that's attributed to those keywords on that log. So here we go. Velvet Revolver. Our keyword was Velvet Revolver, and it tells us Velvet Revolver is made up of former members of Guns N' Roses and Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pilots, and they're currently looking for Weiland's replacement because he bailed on them. Scroll on down here. Get to the bottom of that page. Let's see what's on page number two for this hour. Nothing that we need to look at specifically. Here we go. Judas Priest's Breaking the Law. Song trivia, number 12 on VH1's greatest hard rock songs of all time. Artist keyword trivia, latest album is Nostradamus. It's a double disc concept album based on the life of Nostradamus. So far, this is looking really good. Let's make things stand out even better. Personally, I like to have my items that aren't songs kind of hide themselves within the printed log so that my songs pop out at me as I'm scrolling through it and I'm announcing things. They jump out at me. So besides having them large and in bold, I want to gray the rest of these items. So we can simply click on the non-music header, come up here to our paint bucket, and change our fill color. Now, if we wanted to, we can make them yellow and green and purple and blue and everything. But I just want them grayed out that, and in most cases, you don't want to waste all that color ink printing out your logs. So let's just make these items all gray. And again, let's just use the pull-down box here, select the color that you want, and it fills it in. And once we've selected gray, which you can barely see there, if we were to select a different color, say yellow, you'd see a yellow bar there. But we don't want yellow, we want gray here. I'll do the same thing for traffic. I also want my spots to print. Because I'm actually importing the commercials into my log, I want to see those, those commercials print on my log. So I come in here to spot. I know all of my information is entered into a field called spot sponsor. So I'm going to take that, drag it, and drop it in here. Size it out. I want it to be small. I don't need it to take up much space. I'm going to make it the smallest font available, an eight point. I also want to put in the scheduled runtime for that element that lined up underneath like so. Size it down. And we'll make it eight points. And here if I wanted to I could make this a different color. You know we go with a darker gray if we wanted or we go with a red or a green or whatever the case may be. We'll stick with that light gray. By double clicking that gripper bar it slams it up to the so that it's nice and tight there. Now when we print it out There we go. Here's our commercial break. In this traffic merge position, we've imported spots for Dirt Devil and for Aware Software. In this one, for Stein Garden Center and Sherwin-Williams Paint. And the run times of those elements are here accordingly. Log keeps getting better and better. Look at more and more and more better as we keep on moving. What else can we add in here? How about an hour header? So that we know when we hand this log to our weekend announcer who's not in here every day. He knows what everything is that he's looking at. Okay. We'll use that gripper bar. Oh, and now we have the hour header exposed. Click on it, and all of our available fields are over here on the left. 
I actually don't want to use any of these things. I want to say, this is my airtime column, this is my artist and title columns, and so on. How am I going to do that? I need to draw them in. And to do so, we're going to use text boxes via a fixed text label. By clicking on that capital letter A, it allows us to draw in a box where we want that information to print. So now we have a label one box. And over here in properties, again, I told you this is an important section, an important toolbar to have open. We're going to replace label one with airtime. So now it's going to print the word airtime right there. I'm going to do the same thing with artists. Replace label two with artist. And keep on going so that we can replace, put title in here. I'm also going to center that field. There we go, intro runtime ending, right above our intro runtime and ending. And one more, we got year and category going to be next. as well. Need to include that I have album and trivia information underneath here. And even in these text headers, we can tell them we want them underlined and so on. that italicized. Need just a little bit more base here and we're going to put in artist trivia. And here we can colorize this so that we can see it nice and nice and bold here on our printed page. We'll give it a yellow highlight. And again when we go to print It includes that information. We get our print percentage down here at the bottom of the screen. There we go. Right now, if we switch pages, we're going to get the hour header to print at the top of each page. We can change that if we wish so that it prints only at the start of the very first page of the each hour, which is probably what you want ultimately anyways. To do that, we come over here and we say repeat. Not on every page, we're going to repeat it none. So now when we print it, it's only going to print at the top of each hour. So there's our page one of hour one, page two doesn't have it. Page one of hour two, page two of hour two doesn't have it, and so forth. Another real common question we're asked. Is, is there any way I can get my station logo to print at the top of every page? The answer is yes, absolutely. Let's take this description field, which is in the page header. It's basically day, date, and hour printed. We're just going to move it out of the way here. And let's put in our logo. Well, this station's logo happens to be the Music Master logo, so we're going to draw the space for that image. Click the image icon and draw on a spot for it. Now, there's something to keep in mind here when doing this. The space that you use here doesn't mean your image is going to fit into it. You need to make sure that your image fits into the space given. For example, to get the image to show up in here, we're going to come over here under the miscellaneous, I'm sorry, under the data header. In picture right now it says none. We're going to hunt for the picture we want to use. Here's our Music Master Windows logo. I select it and hit open, and you notice that we have Sigma, not quite big enough. To get that whole thing to show up in here, this is going to have to be huge. I don't need to waste that much space to print my logo, hopefully. So instead, let's size that back down to something more reasonable. And let's actually use a smaller logo. That's why I have this one called MMWin Very Small. See how much smaller that is? 
Then we can size this box so that that logo fits within it. There we go. I'll make my description bold. And I'm going to write justify that as well. Double click the gripper. Now it's all slid up nice and tight there. So now when we go to print, the top of every page will have Music Master and the description. There we go, our Music Master logo. Day, date, and hour printed, 12 a.m. A couple of it. Of other things we can add into our printed log design. We come down here, we could, in our unscheduled positions here, if you wanted to, you could throw in a text box maybe that says, oh, I don't know, something like, whoops, forgot to schedule this. Announcer's choice slash request. And we can size this a little bigger if we wish. There we go. So now if we have any unscheduled positions left in the log, it'll be a nice big box there that indicates, whoops, forgot to schedule it. Announcer can pick something there or throw in a request. All right. Under our footers, we can include things such as the total time for that hour. Under page footers, we can include things such as the page number. Let's do that under page, um, under our footer, let's throw in our total time. We get asked for that a lot. So we'll come in here for total time, and I'm going to line it up so that it's underneath the air time field, and I'll make it bold and so that it stands out. I'm going to make it a white text with um, sorry, a black background with white text. So that's where my total time will end up. For my page counter, I can put it in page footer if I want, or actually what I think I'm going to do instead is I'm going to throw it in here as part of my page header because I have that open space above my description. So I'll come up here to page header and throw in page count, rather page number. Page count would just say, you know, we have a total of 12 pages printed. Page number will tell us what number this is for the specific page. So size that down. I'm going to use that same. So now we'll have one, two, three, four, et cetera, printing here. So when we go to print, there we go, page number one, page number two. And at the bottom of page two, we have our run length, one hour, two minutes, and 18 seconds. This is page three, nothing going to be at the bottom of page three because it's not the end of the hour. But at the bottom of page four, sure enough, that hour is an hour, two minutes, and 45 seconds in length. A couple of other icons to point out for you here before we move on to the next section. First one, the save icon. You see this throughout the software and rule tree, clocks, and other things. If you don't click on it, you don't save your work. Again, if you close it without saving it, it will prompt you. Well, let's go ahead and click save. And let's call this Music Master Log Design uh, Premium. That's the one we're going to use all the time because it's so nice and pretty. And we're going to save it as a new design as well. So we don't overwrite Log Design 1. We're going to save this as a new one. These two icons here are pretty handy as well. We've got this design. We've worked so hard on it. It's laid out perfectly the way we like it. Let's use it in our other databases. Okay, let's export it. This icon right here is how we would export this design. Click on it, and you have other designs available to us in this, in this situation. If we save it, it's going to save it as Music Master Log Design Premium dot MMDES, Music Master Design. So then if we were in another database, we could open up a new design, click Import, and we could grab Music Master Log Design Premium and import it in. Something to keep in mind, though, when doing this. In this database, artist field might be field number 101. Each field in the program has a unique field identification number. If artist is field 101 in this database, that's what we're actually printing is field 101. 
in your other database at Field 101 could be something entirely different, like automation ID. Title might be something entirely different. It might be add, it might be a, a date field, or it could be your artist keyword field. You need to make sure you double check that when you import a design into a new uh, database or a different database to make sure that the fields you expect to print are actually the ones that are included in that design. And in the event it's not, just go ahead and replace those things. So if this happened to say, instead of artist, it said automation ID, we'll just simply come in here, grab the artist field, and replace it with it. That's our printed blog designer. It's going to come in very handy because a lot of those same features are used in other parts of the program. Uh, specifically in creating printed reports out of your library. So for starters, we need to open up the library. To do so, we click our little green music note here for library maintenance. I want to just open up my music categories, so I will select them. I don't need any specific search filters, but if I did, I could include that here. I do want this music report sorted alphabetically by artist and then by title. Click OK, and there's my list, alphabetically by artist and then by title. Now we talked about the quick print before, which is that red printer design here. To do so would give us a printout exactly what you see on your screen. So we could click on it here and hit OK, and we'll get 369 songs to print out. Looks just like that. Probably the quickest, most efficient way to print out information out of your database using that quick print function. And you can add and subtract fields from that view all you need by using show hide fields. So if we wanted to, we could come in here and we could add in the ending field. And here's one of those drag and drop features. Just click on it and drag it and drop it in there. Drop in run intro right above runtime. What the heck, let's throw in the audio file name. There we go. Let's size all these so that everything fits. Let's double click on the perimeter of it. And make title fit. Make artist fit. There we go. Hit that red print icon. Click OK. And there's our database. All 369 songs. You'll notice it has to wrap to a second line because our audio files are longer than what would fit left to right. So it has to come to a second line, which is why the MP2 file for Caught Up in You is written right there. Same thing, hold on loosely, and so on down the list. Instead of doing that, we could resize things a little bit. You know, we could shrink this down so that our artist field doesn't take up as much space. And that's just clicking on the perimeter, the uh, little barrier in between the two column headers here. And we'll come all the way over here to the end of audio file. And size that down as best we can. Actually, no, we'll move that over here one. Now we can size that down. So now if we go to print, we can possibly get that all on one page. Something else we can do here, though, is using that custom printed library report. This is going to be laid out very similarly, similarly to our printed log designer. We'll just go ahead and create a brand new one from scratch. And as you've been seeing for the last 30 plus minutes, we've got it broken down into three sections our field toolbox, all of our different in items that we can actually print, and our properties toolbox. All the icons up at the top are the same as well. So once you learn how to use one, you pretty much have the other one down. So for starters, we're going to print all of our songs. So in the song field here, we're going to start with our titles. Now a very common request I get from Music Master users is, I want to print out a report where it lists my artist, and then all the songs by that artist. Then the next artist and all the songs by that one, as opposed to artist title on each line. This is how you do that. We're going to say, what information do we want for each individual song? Well, we want the song's title. We also want the, oh, let's say we want the intro field to print. So we'll take that and drop it in here as well. We want the runtime field to print, OK.
And we want the ending code field to print. This is where that drag and drop stuff comes in very quick and very handy. What else do we want? Well, we want our year information. Okay. Size that out accordingly. Drop that in. And we also want our category information. Okay. Take that and we'll drop that in right here. But I want it to start a new section each time or a new group every time the artist changes. So under group headers where we're going to place our artist field. Take that, drop it in like so. And again, the can grow and can't shrink features are all present here as well, just like they were in our scheduled print design. They are also available to you here in our library print design. So let's allow the artist field to grow if necessary. Same thing for the title field. So now as we go through that list, every time the artist changes, we'll get the artist to print. But if it's the same artist for two or more songs in a row, it'll only print once, followed by category, title, intro, runtime, ending, and year of the songs accordingly. Let's go ahead and hit print and see what we get. Hmm, not working quite the way we want it yet, because we haven't told it to start a new line every time we include a new artist. So let's fix that. Come up here to group header one. What field are we going to use to indicate we want a new printout in our group header? Well, that group field in this case is going to be artist. So by doing so, now it says every time the artist changes, print a new line for the artist. We can also do things like every time the new artist prints, we want a new page or to be in a new column and so on. We'll just leave it like this. Hit that print button again. There we go. So we've got all of our ACDC songs showing up. ACDC's Back in Black is in Category 8, 26 Intro, 402 Runtime, Fade Out, 1980 the release, and then our next song in the A category, Big Jack, and so on. And as we scroll through, keep on seeing, oh, Smoke on the Water, Woman from Tokyo, but there's no artist. Where is it? Well, it's probably at the bottom of the previous page. Sure enough, there's the purple. That's something else we can do. We can tell it to keep all that stuff together so that you don't get the artist to print on one page and then his or her songs on another. To do that, we're going to go into group header one as well. And we're going to change keep together, group keep together instead of none. We're going to say all. If we said first detail, that would only mean the first song by Deep Purple, or the first song by ACDC would have to print with the group header. The rest of them do not have to. Instead, we're going to tell them they all have to print on the same page. So again, we'll go ahead and print this out. So now as we go through, there's Deep Purple with all the Deep Purple songs. Metallica starts a new page. Why? Well, because on the previous page, we didn't have enough space. We only had, you know, an inch or so of space there, so it just decided to move Metallica to its own page. And there we go, all of our Metallica songs in this database. In our report header, we can introduce some other information as well. That information listed over here on the side. Data set logo in this case is the name of the database. In this database, it's called right now Music Master Printed Reports. So if we wanted to, we could add the data set logo. More than likely on yours, it's going to be WXYZ, the home for rock or something like that. Uh, so you could add in your data set logo there. If you want your actual image logo, again, you would have to draw that in using the image icon here and then draw on a space for it like we did in the, in the uh, printout header on our printed log design. So we could instead use report date and time. This is when this report was generated. We could also say the query name if we had used the saved query in the database. You know, artist and title sorted by artist and title. We could do that and drag that in there. Under page header, by the way, report header and report footer have the same items available. We could add in total songs if we wanted. Right there and that white text with black background like we'd done earlier. 
it's not at the end of our report, we'll get the total songs printed. Page header and page footer have the same information available to them. We can include page numbers and so on, uh, the report date and time information, or we could simply put in column headers like we did earlier. So that we could say page header, here we go, fixed text. Throw that in here, this is where our artist is going to go. And then draw another one for title, which will start right here. And so on. So now when we go to print, and again, just double clicking on that gripper box for each item. Make sure everything's in there nice and tight. Hit print and we'll get our nice print out accordingly. So we're printing this out March 4th, 1.46 p.m. Artist and title information just like you see it there. If we get all the way to the end of this report, it tells us we have 369 total songs printed which is exactly correct. Once again, you can save this report design just by clicking the Save icon and giving it a name. There we go. Our report design has been saved. One other thing to point out for you. The reason why our artists are printing alphabetically here is because in library maintenance, we pre-sorted them alphabetically. If they weren't sorted alphabetically by artist, instead we just simply opened up more music categories. The order here is the order in which they were added to the database, or Music Master Song ID order. If we were to run that printed report now, artist title report, go ahead and hit print. You'll quickly see it's going to be printing the artist an awful lot unless we happen to have miraculously added two or three songs by the same artist in one ad session. There we go. We added a couple by Def Leppard at once. We added a several by Aerosmith all at once, some by Hendrix all at once. So their song ID numbers are in sequential order, thus they're printing in sequential order there. So make sure when you go to print that you sort your list in library maintenance first, and then go ahead and print it. Starting to run short on time here. Fortunately, we only have a couple other things to show you here as far as printing in Music Master, the first of which is going to be printing clocks. If we go ahead and open up clock, we can open up, let's say, general clock A1 here. When you go to print, use that white printer icon right here. And you have several options here. We can print just the song elements, which would be our music and non-music categories. Our non-song elements, breaks, traffic merges, and so on and we can turn on and off the print pie chart display. If you have all three checked, you basically get this exact clock to print here, as well as your uh, circular clock to print, the pie chart. And it'll look like this. Page one has your general clock on it. Page two has your pie chart on it. Let's say you want to print a bunch of clocks. Well, that's certainly doable. Click your clock icon and check the clocks you want to include. For example, we want to print general clock. We also want to print the fixed positions clock and our top 100 countdown hour one and hour or two clocks. They're checked. Now we hit print and we can choose what items we want to print out of each. Go ahead and hit continue and we're going to get our print out here momentarily. Here's that first clock we selected and it's pie chart. The second clock has a lot of invalid categories because the category that I had originally scheduled in there no longer exists in the database. So that was not too effective. It's also shown us a lot of gray there. The next one was for our top 100 countdown, so it's telling us to use the session list elements and so on. Again, the pie chart's not going to show us a whole lot. Same thing with the second hour of our countdown. But it gives you the illustration that you can print multiple clocks all at once. You can also print format lists the same way. Check the list you want to print and hit print. Same thing with assignment grids. If you just have one highlighted, that's the one that's going to print. If you have several checked, it'll print them all that are checked.
So here's our first grid, our new main grid, and our segment timing grid. One last place for printing that we're going to touch on is out of your rule tree. Come up here, open up the rule tree, and we'll click uh, open up the all categories folders a little bit here. And select all categories, and now let's hit that white printer. Again, we have several options here. We can print the whole tree if we want. We can print only the selected tree node. Right now, that tree node is all categories. It's the item that's, that's uh, selected right now. If we check that, only the items in all categories will print now. We can also tell it print only the visible rules if we want. If we do that, we're only going to see day parting, clock segment timing, format clock filter, rule group artist up, and rule group sound. If we uncheck that, it gives us the opportunity to see what's in those folders. We can print empty rule folders if any of those happen to be in there, which is basically a rule folder or a rule group that has nothing in it. So if we had nothing in breakable one, it could print that. Rule properties, that would tell us, you know, basically the, the guts of what the rule does. Day offset window, what it's doing. Print the grid property graphics would include our segue protection grids and so on. So if we go ahead and we hit print entire rule tree and we leave all this checked just as so and hit OK, we're going to get a printout that looks like this. And just slide that over a little bit and size it down here. So we see under unbreakable, day parting, clock segment timing, and format clock filter one. Those are the three rules right here. Rule group artist separation. Had we told it to print only the visible rules, we would not have seen the artist keyword rule that's in here for auto of 310. That says our default separation for auto keywords is 310. That's the description that it's giving us. It's also giving us the breakdown of what the rule group mode is, the availability, the time restriction, in this case none, rules only apply to records from selected categories, and so forth. We told it to include the graphic. Well, in our break folder, we have the rule group sound. And it contains all these different sound code rules and the sound segue protection grid. So it prints out the graphic of that grid. And as we keep scrolling through, we see the hours and other rules that are indicated here. Breakable one for occurrence is empty. But it's still printed because we said print empty rule folders. So a lot of cool different things you can get printed out here, uh, which comes in really handy if you need to send your rule tree to somebody who doesn't have Music Master. You don't actually want to share your data. You just want to show them your rule tree. Print it out, print it to a PDF file, and then email it, which is another good point to make, is that because there are so many graphics within Music Master, it's not possible to just print to a text file. You have to print it to something that can handle those graphics. In best case scenario, use a PDF file and then email that PDF if you can't actually print this of paper. And to do so, if you're a Music Master customer, we have several PDF creators available on our website, uh, and your music scheduling consultant can help you get those items. Or just hunt for one on the internet. There's plenty of free ones out there available. So that's printing in Music Master. Covered printed log designs, printed music reports, printing out clocks and, and assignment grids, as well as printing out your rule tree. As always, if you have any questions on this, feel free to email us. Just the name of the person you want to contact at mmwin.com, or you can send it directly to support at mmwin.com, and we can get back to you that way as well. Thanks a lot, and with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Mark Volke, and I thank you for attending today.